So today I wanted to show you guys how visualizing data with Zebra BI can help your storytelling. But to make this video a little bit more interesting, we're going to be putting Zebra BI head to head with native visuals and another paid service for visualizing data. So I want to make a pretty advanced visualization today, which is a waterfall chart with multiple totals, showing our EBIT development from previous year to our actuals. Now follow me into Excel and I will show you that you've been wasting your precious time by not using Zebra BI. So welcome guys to Excel. And I wanted to bring you here for just a second, this wasn't a mistake, just to show you my data. So we're gonna start with EBIT 2021 and then we're gonna look at our different categories and the difference between 2001 and 2002 and how they affect our bottom line. In the end, we would also like to see how uh, exchange rates affect our our end EBIT 2022 and that is what we have here as well. We've also received a comment from our sales team regarding our revenues which we would also like to input into our presentation. All right now off to PowerPoint and let's start with Zebra BI. Going under my add-ins inserting a Zebra BI chart we are going to choose a contribution bridge chart. This chart already pretty much looks the way that we want it to look. And we can also see that there's some data here. And this is great. This is, this is so we can see exactly how we have to structure our data. We can see that we can just put the comments in here and that we put the data in here and I guess everything should work. Let's try it. Let's delete everything, go back to our data, copy it, go back into PowerPoint simply paste our data and it seems to have worked. Let's also paste the comment. All right, for revenues. There we go, right here. Now paste it under revenues like this and oh, this is perfect, good. So what we get now is a waterfall chart that we have to tell which, uh, which of the categories are totals, which we do like this. So just click on it click result. There we go. This is our total. And since this is previous year, we will also change the color. Then do the same for EBIT 2022. So a result and there we go. With what? Three clicks. We're pretty much done. We got a beautiful looking waterfall chart that shows us the exact contributions from our different categories. But the best thing is that we didn't really have to change anything. So the increases are green, the decreases are red, and uh, the chart makes perfect sense. Another thing that is a very welcomed addition is the comment, right? We get a comment marker here signaling exactly where the comment is and what data point it refers to. And it also shows the difference uh, from previous year that uh, so we can actually understand even more so we can build our story through this and uh, give better understanding even to the people li listening to us. Then the second thing um, which also adds a lot to the understanding and the overall storytelling is the difference highlights. We can see that for every total we have a difference highlight here um, so we can know exactly how well we're doing versus previous year. So after, after our conversion rate changes uh, we're doing about 14% better than we were last year, which is which is amazing. Well, this was pretty easy. And if you agree, like the video, subscribe for more of this kind of content. Now let's go to native charts. So continuing with our first challenger, native charts. Go into insert and insert chart, find a waterfall and insert it. And our chart is looking very colorful. <laughs> it's looking very colorful. Okay, so it's already a multiple total uh, waterfall chart, which is perfect for us. And let's again just try to just input the data that we have here. All right, to go back to PowerPoint. And let's see if this works. All right, cool. I guess I guess it did. All right, I'm just going to close this. And let's see what we got. Okay, so one thing that's definitely wrong is this should not this should not be a total so i'm going to clear this 
but I am going to have to make this a total and this was pretty easy, so pretty cool. All right, so now it's looking a little bit better. However, at the first glance, we can see that something is wrong. So with Zebra BI, since we could, we didn't have to, but we could invert a series if we needed to, even if it was in a positive or a negative number in our, uh, in our source, Excel doesn't really have the option to do that. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go back to the data. We're gonna have to go back to the data. How do you get to the data? Two hours later. So we're gonna have to go back into our data and actually add a few minuses. So a minus here for materials, a minus here for personnel and actually other expenses should be positive and the effects change should be negative. Okay, perfect. So that's it. Uh, we can now close this and all right, this is looking a lot better. Now we have to declutter the chart, which means get rid of the, the grid lines, already looking a lot better and we'll get rid of the Y axis as well as we don't need it because we have the data labels. Now, looking at this, there's some more things that we have to change, it's the colors. So let's change the color here to something grayish, grayish like this. And of course the increases cannot be black, they have to be green and the decreases should be red. And now as you guys can see, I have to do this for each category itself, which is time consuming and requires a lot of clicks. But let's see if I can do it without actually making a mistake. Our actuals will be black, just like in the zebra one before. This should be red and, oh, actually, I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. There we go. I did it without actually making a mistake. And now that we've uh, used the right colors, because the chart makes more sense, we can get rid of the legend as well. Um, and we can also get rid of the title as I think the chart is expressive enough on what it's showing us. Okay, so right now after quite a lot of clicks, we're actually left with a pretty nice chart, right? Um, but of course we're missing something, we're missing our comments. So the problem is, that there's actually no way to really add the comments to our native visuals in Excel or PowerPoint. So what we would have to do is, well, fake it a little bit. Uh, maybe make a little, a little shape here, fill it with, uh, with blue like this, and then maybe just copy it, all right? Trying to make something that resembles Zebra BI, all right? Copy this. Can I just copy and paste it like this? I think I can. Yes, all right, and it adds a text block. Make it a little bit bigger like this, and there we go. Okay, so this, this could be a way to do our comments, but usually what you would guys would get is, uh, you would have you would have comments like somewhere on the slide usually not even indicated to which data point they are uh, referring to so at least we know that here all right so now i think if we look at it we're pretty close however we're already missing um, another big another big insightful change um, which is of course the highlight markers. So the total highlights are not presented here. And again, if we would like to make them, we would actually have to make them kind of the same way that we did for the comments. We'd have to actually make them ourselves. Another big problem with uh, the native visuals is something that actually didn't happen today. So we have in our categories pretty big differences. So they're pretty clear to see. But if we didn't have this, if the differences would be very little and hard to see, it would actually be very hard to break the axis. So what we would have to do is we'd have to make the axis um, smaller to make, the, to make these pop, so seem a lot bigger, right? Um, and with Zebra BI, this can be done with just a simple click. So one click and uh, we get this beautiful indication that the axis has been broken and now we can get a real feel of the differences, um, even the little ones, right? Here, 
pretty much impossible again we would have to we would have to just uh, fake it a little bit make uh, make something uh, like this you know <laughs> there we go to indicate that we've broken the axis and uh, of course bring in uh, the y-axis again do the same thing here for these totals and in the end we would be able to get to something that resembles this um, but it would take a lot more clicks and a lot more time. So the main two problems with native charts is that it takes quite a lot of clicks to actually get an effective visualization and the second one being that they're missing quite a lot of insightful additions like the difference highlights that would really help understand the data more. So now let's continue with our second challenger which is also a custom visualization paid application um, from our competitors. Let's, let's actually see how well they do. So we're gonna go insert and we're gonna insert some of their elements. We're gonna insert a build up waterfall chart and we're gonna do it in a, in a vertical position like this. Oh, and it made, the, it made it black. Okay, it opened something. Where did you open this? Okay, it closed it again. So, okay, now we, we have the, uh, the start of our waterfall chart. However, uh, one thing I like is it's not overcrowded, which is, which is very good. Now, I think if we click here, we can open. Okay, I clicked a little bit too many times. We can open the data editor and now it should be as easy as just copy and pasting our data. So, okay, now, just going to transpose this so it matches the style that it needs to. There we go. And transpose this as well. So just like that. And there we go. All right. So we have our categories. We have also our values and should be like this. Oh, wait a little bit. I have to change this. So put it here. Yeah, and replace the data. All right, so now what we have to do is we can't actually tell, we can't actually tell it uh, here which are totals and which are not. So what we have to do is we have to go here, write an E here, write an E here, write an E here. And this E uh, just means that it calculates uh, the, uh, what's left. And what we have to do now is again with materials, add a minus. Oh, what am I doing? With materials, add a minus here. There we go. And at personnel, we have to do the same thing. Can I? All right. With other expenses, it should actually be positive, like we said. All right. And this should now work, I hope. And. Uh, Okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Our EBIT 2021 is zero. Oh, I guess I should have something here. Okay, that was my mistake. All right. So let's just put, put the number here, back, and all right, there we go. It works, <laughs> perfect. Oh yeah, because it's a buildup, yeah. Oh, makes, makes sense. So uh, th th that one's on me. Right. So now what we have is uh, an actually pretty clean looking uh, vertical, vertical waterfall, although we had to click again quite a lot. But now this, this um, of course is not looking good again. So what we have to do is, oh, we can, we can have some, we have some uh, already prepared ones and we're gonna do, okay, green for up. I have to do each one. I have to do each one separately. Okay. So there we go. All right. Green here as well. All right. This can stay black and wait. Move. 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 There we go. <laughs> Move this and then make it green. All right. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not looking, not looking too shabby. 
However, the amount of clicking I definitely don't like. Okay, so one thing, one thing that I want to do now is see if I can add a difference highlight. So a difference highlight, just like this. So a difference arrow. There we go. Okay, wait, what happened? All right, and we receive a difference arrow. So this one for this one and another one, I would need another one here. So, all right. I cannot, cannot move it somewhere else. Maybe, maybe try to make it like this. Okay, so, I mean, it is kind of visible. It would be better if I could move this. Can I move this? No. Okay, so, wait, drag for, drag here for automatic. Okay, no, this is not right. Okay, so, all right, it has to stay like this. All right, but we, we actually got some different highlights. Um, now, now what I need to do is I need to add the comment but again, I don't think, I don't actually think I have an easy way how to. Oh wait, I went too far. Can't read anything. Um, let's see, let's see if we have something. So, maybe it's me, but I don't, I don't think that we have, uh, I don't think we have a way so in the end, I think we don't have a way of, uh, of of putting in a comment. So I guess I guess we just do it the the old way, just like we did here, and we're just gonna copy it. We're just gonna copy it from here. So this and this, and then copy it here. And if we can copy, let's see if we can copy this here. Okay, I copy both things. God, <laughs> all right. So there we go, okay. So our second challenger, I think, fared a little bit better. It produced a pretty clean chart from the get-go, but changing anything to just make uh, the look and feel a little bit more standardized took forever with an enormous amount of clicks. The second problem is it only really works in PowerPoint. So with Zebra BI and even with native visuals, you pretty much have the same visualization style throughout the different Microsoft programs. So with Zebra BI for Office, you have the same for Excel and PowerPoint, and you can also use Zebra BI in Power BI. However, you can't do this with our challenger right here. So I think it wasn't enough today to take the crown from Zebra BI. And that's the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you storytelling data wizards next time.